Hey, welcome back with Gourmet Channel, Hurricane Irma Vlog number four. Seems like this damn thing's just uh, dragging around. Uh, I don't know. We've been seems like we've been doing this now for days and days. Just hit the Florida Keys. Send all my prayers and thoughts out to anybody who was stupid enough to stay there. Um, just hit right between Key West and uh, the Seven Mile Bridge. So all you guys over there in those little funny name keys, um, hope you're all right. So anyway, current weather conditions, breezy, rainy, how about that? All right, well, as far as prep goes, except for putting a few more things away uh, and getting the chickens out of the pen and into the garage haven't done much but still got to eat so one of the things I wanted to show you guys this morning if your uh, power goes out and you're like me and uh, everything in the house works on electricity you're gonna need some other way to cook or you're gonna be eating cold hot dogs and bologna sandwiches uh, until the power comes back on so I'm gonna show you a couple other simple things you can use uh, that are relatively inexpensive that you can uh, you can cook on. I'm gonna show you those this morning, right, guys. I, I wanted to show you my backup setup here um, for when the power's out for a long time. We already got some fried potatoes there. We're gonna do some bacon. We're gonna do some eggs on this one. This is your standard uh, uh, electronic ignition Coleman propane stove. Runs on these little bottles. You see them everywhere. You can cook a great meal on that little stove right there. I leave it out here all the time and I use it to make sides on and. I just like to come out here when it's cool and right here on our, our beautiful summer kitchen and the studio here and just cook so much fun. All right, and then his, his older brother over the, here, uh, this standard is the old uh, Coleman 425. This one here is uh, not dual fuel. This one uh, burns camp fuel right here. Okay. Uh, but they do make these that will also burn unleaded gasoline. So find one of these now sometimes you can find these in a yard sale because people don't even know what they are or, or much less how to use one um, you can still get all the parts for them to rebuild them because these carburetors do go bad and those little pumps down here but anyway uh, we'll be bringing that out in a little while and firing it up to show you how to operate it and then more of your really basic deal it's just a camp burner this is one I've had for years I keep it in my truck um, so you just basically put this, uh, put your propane bottle right in that stand and push it down in there tight. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then we'll just screw this on top of there. It just screws on top of the bottle. So we'll go ahead and get that set up, and we'll make some bold eggs on that right now for you. I remember, you're gonna. This is one of your most important tools. You're gonna need. Make sure you have this in your in your hurricane supplies. You just uh, crack the gas on that a little bit, give her a spark. You see that makes a beautiful flame. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put our, our little number eight net mate on there. Now this thing could be a little precarious. Just make sure she's balanced on there. And you can kind of adjust this base a little bit to get the top level. But that thing puts out a lot of heat and that'll get that water up to boil real fast. Alright, just a little safety note because I realized just a minute ago that I forgot to tell you don't use any of these things inside your garage or inside your house uh, we're here in a wide open back screen porch uh, I also have a fan you know ceiling fans they're running okay uh, carbon monoxide is definitely produced from any type of propane burner so in the house never in the garage never uh, if you got an outside porch like this, probably okay. Just keep the doors of the house closed while you're doing it. All right, that is only taking about, literally about three minutes since this is such a direct, nice, hot flame. Uh, it doesn't take long to get that water boil in. That's a big cast iron pot there. All right, the old, uh, the old timey, the old school. You know, it has these wings right here. You can fold these out 
and it has these little uh, clips here that go in the slots on the side. You use that if it's windy to flatten that up thing nice and tight to keep the wind off your burners. Here we're not going to have that issue, so we're just going to fold it up. Uh, this one does have the, the hinges that don't let the back go all the way back down. I believe though there's some way you can kind of unhook that and take it off. I don't know how to do it. So you don't have to have that. So under here is where this tank gets stored. So we're going to go ahead and carefully take that out. And it's, this has fuel in it a little bit. Uh, I don't know how good it is because it's been a while. So we'll see if it will work or not. Now we slide it right through this hole here. And you can see right here, this is the part that receives it, the manifold. And then there's little slots. Sometimes you put the splash down. And these little slots hang your tank. Just like that. And this is your control knob for your gas. And this is your lean mix burn. Uh, if you follow the directions on the tank, it'll tell you to turn that in the up position when lighting it. All right, and over here you unscrew this little plunger knob and there's a hole in the end of it that you have to hold your thumb over to make it pump. So uh, we'll just pump that up while the eggs are boiling over there, so I need to go turn them down a little bit. Alright, so we got that pumped on, pumped up, we got our, our, our uh, mix valve up, so we're going to go ahead and crack it. We'll start hearing it come out, and she just lights right up just like that. All right, this one's a little low on gas. And what they tell you here is to let it warm up a few. As you notice, the uh, carburetor goes directly over the burner. That helps to pre-warm that air fuel mixture, or uh, the air uh, fuel going through there, which helps it to burn a lot cleaner. So after a few minutes, then you can turn this little valve here down and your flame will clean up a bit. Okay, that's doing pretty good. Now to start this side of the burner, there's a valve over here and let me move the camera I'll show you. Okay, right here on the side of the stove, that's your valve to open your second burner. Okay, so you want to hold your flame uh, over that burner and then slowly open this till, it, till that one starts. Our eggs are boiling way over here. So I got them set on a low simmer. About the lowest setting that goes on there. As always, best kind of these stoves are really designed to work with cast iron. We're just gonna do a couple more bacons. We already have a bunch of them we cooked earlier. And then we'll warm the other ones we've already got ready. We'll warm some of those up for you. Okay, operation on the uh, electronic ignition propane stove is much uh, simpler. We just uh, going to crack and give it a little, little power and click over this knob and it's got a, a igniter there that lights up your your fire and then you got your adjustment here. The burners are much smaller on these though, so it, it doesn't spread the heat out as much as the old-timey windows. So cast iron, pretty much a necessity on this one as well. Um, the old timey one, you can get away with non cast iron pans, um, but still cast iron pans are going to be the best for using on any of these camp stoves. So we're going to go ahead and make up some eggs. And this one, this is my uh, antique, uh, antique generic lodge number eight. It says made in the USA on the bottom, so I know that's uh, probably back in the 50s or 60s and it's smooth bottom uh, which is the one I prefer for eggs we got a squirter I used the back of the shell to try to push it over and it didn't work very well um, cooking during a hurricane. Alright guys, well, I hope you learned a little bit of how to, to uh, cook on these three different type of propane stoves today. As you hear, the weather's getting a little nastier now. Uh, that's the whole reason we're here, uh, showing you how to do this. 
So let's go ahead and plate it up. Little easy egg right there. Coming on with some of our fried potatoes. Love me some fried potatoes and some cast iron. We got uh, bacon over here. So, uh, just not be stingy with the bacon. Bacon right there. And on my potatoes, I like me some uh, some green onions. Awesome with that. And a little bit of uh, cornish there. And I forgot a very important thing. That important thing with some Seminole Swamp seasoning. I love this stuff on my potatoes and eggs. Okay, so we give that plate a nice sprinkle of the Seminole Swamp. It also gives a beautiful color to the plate. There you go. Big breakfast cooked during the hurricane. Oh, and I forgot. If you're one of those kind of people and you like this, let's check out this, how we did on the boiled eggs. Perfect. Okay, a little sprinkle on them too. There you go. That's even better. Well, if y'all hear that sound, tornado. tornado warning in this area till 11 a.m. EDT. Take shelter now. Check local media and WS. Okay, well, I guess we need to get our ass indoors. guys well tornado warnings over uh, we missed that one uh, it's about five miles six miles crow flies north of here uh, the warned area anyway but hey breakfast was great <laughs> we're gonna be dodging this for a while yet uh, the height of this thing is still not to be supposed to be here till 3 a.m. tomorrow 3 a.m. so we got the day today to relax a little bit get this video up for you guys and then uh, we'll be back later I do got some uh, plans for the storm gets here uh, late night early in the morning we got some uh, battery powered lights I'm gonna set up out here and then uh, we're gonna try to get the GoPro uh, set up to where we can uh, operate that from inside All right, guys so we'll see what we'll see what happens for right now it's back with gourmet y'all thanks for watching